Here we go. Why Roe failed to deliver Ohio on Election Day? What happened in Ohio this time around? And But what Bob Fetrakis points out is that in the book Boss Rove, and uh, thank you, Daniel, and we have had uh, the author of that book on this program. He's been on our, in fact, he, he was one of our Conversations with Great Minds. You can find that over at conversationswithgreatminds.com, half-hour discussions. In that book, he documents how in 2004, Karl Rove organized this system where the Ohio vote was counted in Ohio, and at 11.13 p.m. at night, the entire Ohio voting system crashed. All their computers crashed. A minute later, they came up. In that minute, all the votes had been rerouted through a server system in Tennessee. And so all the vote totals flowed back into the system in Ohio, and John Kerry lost, even though the exit polls showed him winning. And not only did he lose, but he lost specifically in, there was a series of counties here, Delaware, Butler, and Warren counties, and suburban Cincinnati. These counties, Bob Fetrakis writes, these three counties, Delaware, Butler, and Warren, provided more than Bush's entire Ohio victory margin of 119,000 votes in 2004. So what happened in Ohio this time? You know, well, interestingly enough, as Fetrakis notes, curiously, the Ohio Secretary of State's vote tabulation website went down at 11.13 p.m. and was mentioned by Karl Rove on the news. This is one minute earlier than the time on election night 2004 when Ohio calls votes were outsourced to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then the vote flipped for Bush. Now, this is not some, you know, wild claim. Uh, Vanity Fair contributing editor Craig Unger wrote the book Boss Rove. It's right there in the book. You can read it. This time, the Cleveland, the Cuyahoga County vote tabulation site went down as well. So when these vote tabulation sites came back up a minute later, now back in 2004 when they came back up, all of a sudden the numbers had flipped from John Kerry winning to to George W. Bush winning. But this time when they went down, Barack Obama was winning and Sherrod Brown was winning and others. And when they came back up, Barack Obama was winning and Sherrod Brown was winning. So what was different this time, last week, from 2004? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. I mean, really interesting. Wong Kett has posted a letter that is uh, dated 6 November 2012 by Orca Killer and the Great Oz of Anonymous. And uh, let me just share it with you. It's, uh, you know, it's the, uh, in fact, one of the things that causes me to think that this definitely is anonymous is the the kind of semi-anachronistic and flowery language that they use. You know, it's, it's, it's like they're talking, not just wearing the masks of Guy Fawkes, but of the era of Guy Fawkes. Greetings to the good people of the Velvet Revolution. Pleased we were to see that you put your faith in the hands of we protectors of democracy and tempted, too, to claim your generous reward, but wealth does not drive us. Two months prior to your offer, we chose to take action against those who have subverted the will of the people in past elections, which resulted in terrible destruction across the globe. I think it's reasonable to assume they're talking about the 2004 election and the way it was stolen in Ohio electronically by Karl Rove. We began following the digital traffic of one Karl Rove, a disrespecter of the role of law, the rule of law, knowing that he claimed to be kingmaker while grifting vast wealth from barons who gladly handed him gold to anoint another king while looking the other way. After a rather short time, now keep in mind, Karl Rove put a lot of money into this voter database, this Get Out the Vote, GOTV, Get Out the Vote, a program called Orca, Orca the Killer Whale. Okay, back to the letter from Anonymous. After, After a rather short time, we identified the digital structure of Karl's operation and even that of his Orca. 
This was an easy task in that barn doors were left open and the wind swept us inside. So what did we do with these doors? Did we leave them open and catch the thieves as they steal the prize? Or do we close them so they cannot steal the prize? Our decision? Protect the citizens. We coded and created what we call the Great Oz, a targeted, password-protected firewall that we tested and refined over the past weeks. We placed this code on more than one of the digital tunnels and their destinations that Carl's not-so-smart worker bees planned to use on election night. We noticed that these tunnels were strategically placed to allow for tunnel rats to race to the server sewers from three different states. Ah, yes, Carl tried to make it appear that there were more than three, but we quickly saw the folly of his ploy. We watched as Carl's little boys and girls confidently ran their tests while Carl told his barons to smoke cigars. So apparently what they did, what Anonymous did, if this is to be considered true, and, and this, I mean, you know, here's the question. I mean, Bob Fatrakis, there's a lot of people scratching their head. He writes, was the fix in on Election Day in Ohio? The question surrounding Election Day activities in Ohio and Carl Rove's now infamous meltdown on Fox TV election night are causing a buzz in the election integrity movement. Of course, we don't know for sure what happened, but we know the circumstances were eerily similar to election tampering techniques the free press discovered after the 2004 election. One major similarity was Rove's insistence to his colleagues on Fox News that the media consortium's exit polls were wrong in Ohio. This is the same claim he made in 2004 concerning Ohio and in 2000 concerning Florida. And then he talks about how, the, the, curiously, the Ohio Secretary of State's vote tabulation website went down at 11.13 p.m., mentioned by Rove on the news, one minute earlier than the time on election night 2004, when the Ohio votes were sent to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to be counted, tabulated, and sent back to Ohio. Okay. That last part, my words. Actually, his words were, and then the vote flipped for Bush. And then he adds, this isn't just a free press claim, but is well documented by Vanity Fair contributing editor Craig Unger and his book, Boss Rove. So you go through this whole thing that Bob Fetrakis wrote, and he's talking about how, you know, these, these software pa- these experimental software patches that were supposed to be put on Ohio machines, they sued to stop that. They were unsuccessful, which kind of leaves, you know, Bob and the other people in the election integrity movement scratching their head going, what happened? How is it that Rove was able to steal Ohio in 2004 by moving the, the tabulations, the, the vote totals, out of the state at 11.13 or 11.14 p.m. over to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they got massaged, and then they got sent back to Ohio 60 seconds later? Just in time to announce that George W. Bush had won in 2004. How is it that that did not happen this year? Well, here we have Anonymous saying, ha ha, we found the tunnel. We found the back door, and we put a firewall in it that's pa- password protected, password supplied by Anonymous, not by Carl Rove. They kept the door open right up until election night. They watched Carl Rove's little rat scurrying back and forth in them, testing out the systems to steal the vote. And then they locked the fire door on election night. Which makes so much sense when you when you consider how dumbfounded Karl Rove was that those numbers were wrong, especially in those three counties.